Hello everyone, I'm Daniel Ströter from Technical University of Darmstadt. Today I will present our paper OLBVH, Octrilinear Bounding Volume Hierarchy for Volumetric Meshes. This paper contributes a novel GPU manable spatial data structure for volumetric meshes. First of all, I explain how this is motivated. In computer graphics, we frequently use spatial data structures, such as quadrees or KD trees, to improve the performance of geometrical calculations. One prominent example is intersection detection. The blue dye mesh intersects with a red TARDIS, which you might know from the TV series Doctor Who. Computing every potential intersection typically is too intrusive. So we construct some spatial data structure and exclude the vast majority of intersections. Another interesting use case is direct volume rendering. In direct volume rendering, we shoot few rays from the camera through the scene. Sampling these few rays can also be accelerated using a spatial data structure. Although spatial data structures are used in many geometry processing applications, they have two issues. One of them is that it typically takes a lot of time to construct high quality spatial data structures. Thus, we accelerate the construction using the GPU. Another issue is that high quality spatial data structures frequently exhibit high memory consumption. And this is especially the case when it comes to GPU computing paradigm, as this uh, typically demands a lot of memory. Now I address previous work. The literature comprises the linear BVH and its variants for GPU efficient construction. When it comes to GPU amenable spatial data structures, the literature focuses on triangular meshes or point clouds, but not on volumetric meshes. However, volumetric meshes are frequently used in geometry processing. Another interesting related research is the direct volume rendering method by Wald et al. They've achieved efficient direct volume rendering of unstructured tetrahedral meshes using RTX hardware acceleration. They've implemented their approach using optics, which supports RTX hardware acceleration. There are acceleration structures for optics engine and RTX, which are not specified. Before I go into detail, I briefly summarize the key contributions of our paper. It contributes a novel bounding volume hierarchy, the OLBVH, for volumetric meshes. The OLBVH exhibits tightly fitting tree nodes, which allows us to introduce boundary flex of tree nodes. The OLBVH can be efficiently constructed using the GPU. Its memory consumption is sparse. The construction workload and memory consumption of the OLBVH can be reduced by altering a tuning parameter. We also present an efficient direct volume rendering of unstructured meshes. For 3D printing, we present a conservative slicing approach for volumetric meshes. We also present an efficient mesh intersection detection method for volumetric meshes. The key idea of our paper is to reduce the spatial partitioning problem to a sorting problem using the z-order curve. We can observe that the z-order curve inherently spans a grid. We assign primitives to spatial grid cells whenever they A, B, Bs overlap the spatial grid cells. In this way, we obtain tightly fitting tree nodes. We exploit these tightly fitting tree nodes to introduce a boundary marking of tree nodes. Furthermore, we can observe that volumetric meshes fill space more densely than surface meshes. For this reason, we organize hierarchy as octree to save tree nodes. 
In addition, we use some um, compressed offset representation of parent to children in nurture primitives relationships. The blue numbers indicate parent to children relationships, while the red numbers indicate nurture primitive relationships. As you can see, blue numbers are only required for internal tree nodes. For instance, the root node has children 1 to 8, thus its offsets are 0 to 8. And the root node spends all 30 primitives, thus its offsets are 0 to 30. Our GPU efficient construction approach can be summarized as a sequence of four stages. Initially, we apply heuristic to determine the tree depth. Subsequently, we calculate and sort mode encodes, which are encapsulated by primitive AABBs. Thereafter, we record at which levels those sorted mode encodes split. Finally, we construct hierarchy bottom-up using the split positions. The reason for the initial tree depth determination is choosing an appropriate grid resolution, which does not result in excessive oversampling. In order to determine the tree depth, we find an appropriate grid resolution for each single primitive first. We calculate the ratio of the largest primitive AABB's extent to the highest possible grid resolution, which is governed by the bits spent for quantization. We denote those ratios as alpha p, so each primitive p has its own alpha p, and we calculate these ratios in parallel. Subsequently, by parallel reduction, we find the average of those alpha p's. We also introduce some tuning parameter alpha, which is in the interval 0 to the maximum level, and allows users to enforce shallower trees. The next two stages are pretty similar to the original ABVH construction. Since we have chosen a grid resolution, we calculate a Morton code for each spatial grid cell overlapping with a primitive ABB. We search those Morton codes using a parallel sorting algorithm. Whenever neighboring Morton codes differ, a spatial split has been found. Finally, we perform a bottom-up hierarchy construction. Since each Morton code relates to a primitive, the split positions already imply the primitive offsets. Thus, we already have the red numbers, the primitive offsets, in place. However, what we do not have at this point are the no to children relationships. Those are unclear. For parallel construction, it is beneficial to start at the leaf level and work your way bottom up the tree. However, the layout does not allow for immediate child to parent inference. To resolve this issue, we exploit the fact that children relate to the same primitive ranges as their parents. For instance, node 15 and 16 together relate to a primitive range 7 to 10. Their parent, node 3, also relates to 7 to 10. We start construction at the leaf level. In parallel over leaf nodes, we calculate ABBs and boundary marking. And leaf nodes write their indices to a temporary array. They write their indices to the primitive offset upper bound position. Node 15 writes its index to the ninth position. Node 14 writes its index to the seventh position. Node 16 writes its index to the tenth position. Now we proceed on the higher level. On the higher level, node 3 can infer its children by array lookup. At position 7, it finds node 14. 14 plus 1 equals 15. At position 10, 
Note 3 finds its rightmost child, node 16. And we can thus infer the node to children relationships. I also address traversal. Traversing the OLBVH can be achieved by using any kind of traversal stack. In our paper, we use the short stack to save memory. Some applications, such as intersection detection, require to check every potential intersection, while other applications do not require this. For example, point lookups do not require to check every potential intersection. In all of our traversal algorithms, we try to exploit the boundary marking to boost efficiency. Let's have a look at how our OLBVH compares to other data structures. In our paper, we compare the OLBVH to Apitre's agglomerative LBVH builder and to Optics acceleration structure. We compare with and without RTX hardware acceleration. Our approach does not use RTX hardware acceleration. Only optics data structure uses RTX hardware acceleration. We present runtimes for varying alphas, for varying tuning parameters. Let's have a look at this diagram. We compare runtimes on a Quattro GP100, which does not ship RTX hardware acceleration. As we can see, our approach is superior on the larger meshes. Furthermore, construction runtimes can be reduced by reducing alpha. Let's have a look at this diagram. This diagram shows runtimes on RTX 2080 Ti, which does have hardware acceleration. Now, the optics data structure is faster. Still, our approach is faster than the LBVH. As initially stated, another issue of spatial data structures is memory consumption. For this reason, we compare the memory consumption of our OLBVH to LBVH and optics acceleration structure. The following table shows the memory consumption of the different data structures. As we can see, for OLBVH, reducing alpha effectively reduces memory consumption. Also, the memory consumption of our OLBVH is superior to LBVH in every case. LBVH still relies on binary space partition. We have octree space partition. Optics data structure is sometimes superior to, to OLBVH when alpha is set to zero. However, reducing alpha effectively leads to lower memory consumption. We also present an efficient direct volume rendering approach for unstructured meshes. We perform direct volume rendering by sampling few rays front to back. For each sampling point, we traverse the old BVH, performing a point lookup. Let's have a look at this picture over here. We have mesh M indicated by this shape. We have computed an OLBVH for mesh M, which has a leaf grid. And we have few rays shot from the camera. For each of those few rays, we can traverse the OLBVH only for boundary nodes. This gives us the points at which the few rays enter the leaf grid and the points at which the few rays leave the leaf grid. Thus, we can efficiently compute the relevant ray intervals. This allows for some 
efficient space skipping. We compare our approach to Wald et al's approach without RTX hardware acceleration. We achieve significant speedups. Compared to LBVH, our speedups are even better. However, when RTX hardware acceleration is present, Wald et al's approach perform significantly faster, in fact up to 4.8 times faster. We show a video demonstrating our direct volume rendering approach. We render a geometry courtesy by Airbus Operations GmbH. As we can see, we achieve 20 FPS using a Quattro GP100. We render von Mises stress. Red parts represent high stress, while blue parts represent low stress. Another interesting research field is 3D printing. In 3D printing, the accuracy of the printed model is limited by the resolution of the used 3D printer. In order to mitigate this, we propose a new slicing algorithm. This algorithm is called conservative slicing. In conservative slicing, we subdivide the slicing plane into a voxel grid and test for intersection with the input mesh using the OBVH. Each of those voxels exhibits some signals, which is the extent normal to the plane, to be conservative in each direction. Let me explain conservative slicing using this image. We have the blue dashed lines, which indicates the resolution of the 3D printer. Again, we have mesh M and its OBVH. First of all, we sample the slicing points according to the resolution of the 3D printer. Some of those points are at the boundary and no containing tetrahedron can be found. In those cases, we construct a voxel. We traverse for this voxel only for the boundary between nodes. If the voxel intersects with the mesh, we add the slicing point to the model. This yields conservative models. Those models can be carved to a resolution more fine-grained than the resolution of the 3D printer allows for. Using the OBVH yields 3 to 25 times faster slicing times than LBVH. Of course, we present performance evaluation of the most prominent use case for spatial data structures, intersection detection. We detect intersecting tetrahedra of two meshes in parallel. Each thread traverses the OBVH of the other mesh for a tetrahedron and gathers a list of intersecting leaf nodes. In this algorithm, we again exploit boundary marking. Let's have a look at the image over here. These two tetrahedra intersect interior tree nodes. Since the old BVH belongs to a volumetric mesh, this means that these two tetrahedra intersect the mesh. Using this fact, we can infer the vast majority of intersecting tetrahedra through our traversal. However, some tetrahedra are at the boundary, intersecting only boundary tree nodes. For those tetrahedra, we still have to perform narrow phase intersection testing. Using OLBVH with this algorithm results in significant speedup compared to using LBVH. Our research has shown that it is possible to construct high quality spatial data structures for volumetric meshes efficiently on the GPU. Additionally, memory consumption can be significantly reduced. The boundary marking has allowed for efficient GPU parallel algorithms. We have shown that the construction workload and memory occupation can be parameter controlled. Thank you a lot for your attention. I'm now ready for Q&A.